Low quality movies and TV has definitely harmed the entertainment industry. But the people who have done the most damage, I think, is the actors. One bad show is easily overcome because you'll give the next one a chance. Wheel of Time was trash, but I still went and watched Reacher. The issue with actors, though, is they drive permanent change within the industry, and they're completely insane. Whether that be Jennifer Lawrence saying that she was the first woman to do anything ever in the entire universe, John saying society is getting damaged because an Italian person is being cast as... Latin. I mean, he put an X on the end, but unless he's growing wolverine claws, I'm not going to refer to him as that. Or maybe, for true insanity, it's just Mark Ruffalo saying literally anything ever. But the question I always come back to is why? If actors are pushing for long-term change that will ultimately destroy their industry, there has got to be a reason behind it. People don't waste energy for no reason, especially when it's something as insane as this. Yes, yeah, apparently Snow White can't even have dwarves in it anymore. Wouldn't want to reinforce stereotypes of dwarves being small people. The Jennifer Lawrence debacle is simply the latest in a long line of disasters of actors who come up with seemingly insane things that all have one thing in common. It helps themselves. These are people which are willing to do anything to get paid, well, that means stamp on people who have gone through the same problems you have. Actually try to appropriate some kind of collective bargaining power of other people, all for your own personal benefit. Or, in Jennifer Lawrence's case, just actively lie and make up an entire fantasy world that you can then rail against, in the desperate hope that someone will finally give you a job. But the weirdest thing about the variety tweet is this isn't even the original one. No, the original one got deleted when she got called out for being thicker than an episode of She-Hulk. The stupid thing is, they barely changed anything, they just relied on Twitter Twitter's natural tendency for people to be incredibly lazy and not actually look. Because in the first one, I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, no one had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie. Now we all know this is nonsense. Everybody knows this is nonsense. Even Jennifer Lawrence knew this was nonsense. I don't believe otherwise. From Tomb Raider, Resident Evil, and Aliens, everybody knows. That's why I don't believe that Jennifer Lawrence has had so much of her brain sucked out that she doesn't know as well. No, the more likely scenario for an obvious lie is that we know there'll be no consequences for it, but it also benefits us because it drives the narrative we want to drive. That's why Variety deleted the tweet and then reposted it without the quote. But it's still in the video. I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie. Yeah. Ever? Yeah, they removed the text quote and just assumed that no one would go to the extra effort of clicking the video. But what does she get out of it? I mean, Jennifer Lawrence is a household name. Surely she's doing really well for herself. I mean, uh, yeah, you'd think so, wouldn't you? Because if you go back to her heyday, the realm she's talking about, from 2011 to the end of 2014, so four years, she did 12 movies. But if you take the last four years, she did, um, yeah, she did three. Only achieving a third of your normal workload has got to kind of take a bit of a hit to the ego, doesn't it? You can understand why when you see your career nosediving off a cliff into the ground, that maybe you want to be a little bit more lax on the truth if there's a certain angle we can push to improve it. And to find that angle, you only need to go through to the host article from where the video came from. Jennifer Lawrence and Viola Davis honest about female action heroes of motherhood and press tours ruining acting. Don't you know press tours are ruining acting? Oh, the horror of having to do part of your job to advertise the movie you just got paid for. Motherhood, what a horrible drain it is. Don't you know I'm a victim and female action heroes? If only there was more! Instead, we've just been victims in a society that puts victimization on a pedestal and gives them free stuff. Why would you not want to drive a narrative of you being in that position so that you too can get free stuff. Obviously you want to hire me. What are you, some kind of bigot? Now the interview itself is bad enough in text form, I can't imagine the video of it. You kind of get the feeling they just end up humping at a corner, they're giving each other so much praise. We get things like, this is the biggest honour of my life, your performance changed my life, I don't feel worthy to be in the same room as you, like seriously, I'm gonna throw up. It's interesting that you imply you're not beautiful, I'm sitting next to someone with big, beautiful eyes and is tall and toned. I'd say get a room, but you did, and then filmed it anyway. But we do get the quote, when I was doing Hunger Games, no one had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie, because it wouldn't work. No one had ever done it, you see, no. Because we were told girls and boys can both identify with a male lead, but boys cannot identify with a female lead. That's why not a single male across the world enjoys the Alien movies. That's why the only thing in the piece which actually even attempts to explain what she's actually said 
is when she goes, I'm very self-conscious about my intellect because I didn't finish school. I dropped out of middle school. I don't really care if you dropped out or not. You were an actress. You made a fortune. Does it really matter? But I could understand why you would be self-conscious of your intellect when you make statements like that. Now, she did try and roll it back. She tried to defend herself. It was just, um... Yeah, another reason why that sentence is correct. That's not what I meant to say. I know I'm not the only woman who's ever led an action movie, no. What I meant to emphasize was how good it feels. I want to emphasize how good it feels to get work. To be in a movie, to get paid millions, feels amazing, yes. That's entirely understandable, it's just not what she said at all. I remember when I was doing Hunger Games, Nobody had ever put a woman in the lead of an action movie. Definitely not what she meant. But it's interesting how she tied in her brain those two things together. The act of actually getting work to this whole statement, which she knows isn't true. The statement of being a victim, of being a trailblazer, and the implication that if she's not in your movie, then, I mean, clearly you're just discriminating. If you don't have her in your movie, then you are one of the people which she is talking about. You're one of the people that think the boys can't identify with a female lead. If you don't have a female lead, preferably her, then obviously you're just supporting harmful stereotypes, and you wouldn't want to do that. No, in fact, I think the only way you can protect yourself from that implication is if you hire Jennifer Lawrence. Because Jennifer Lawrence has had such a hard life, she's experienced such trials and tragedy throughout her Hollywood career, that she knows better than to work for a bigot. Having her on side would mean you were almost bulletproof to these accusations. I mean, she's gone through everything, even being asked, how much weight are you going to lose for the role? You know, the action role of Katniss, where she had to be acrobatic, fire bows, and run a lot. It seems like one of the fundamental aspects of being able to fulfill that role would be actually being fit enough to do it. But no, apparently not. She doesn't want girls to feel they can't dress up as Katniss because they're not fit enough. I mean, a more cynical person than me, Jennifer, might assume that you're actually trying to sabotage your potential competition. You're really pushing for all those extra roles that you can be part of while simultaneously saying that you, you don't have to put yourself into a position where you can apply for them. No, I, I, I should be the one that applies for those and gets those roles. How very Peter Dinklage of you. No, no, don't have a movie with seven dwarves in it. That could make them famous actors, and they could get other roles and compete with me. There's only a limited number of roles available for us. The last thing I want is seven more competition. No, no, we certainly don't want those people getting famous. That would be dangerous and reinforce harmful stereotypes of, uh, Peter Dinklage not being a prat, but I was a trailblazer in my youth, and if you don't hire me, then you're definitely some kind of horrible person, and your film should be shamed publicly and not make any money, so, you know, you, you better hire me. But just in case you don't, you should know that my ever-diminishing career is, it's actually my fault. It's, it's not because I'm not actually wanted in any of the roles. No, I was an observer in my own life. I kept trying to fix my life by saying yes to this movie, and then counteract it by saying yes to this movie. But I've realized that to fix my life, I had to do no movies. Yes, that was the key. Why do you have this huge job gap in your CV? Well, um, I, I spent a year traveling the world and finding myself. It's, it's not that I was unemployable. You can see from just how much of a blatant lie what Jennifer Lawrence says that they will say anything to get what they want. They don't care about the damage that's caused. If the entertainment industry dies, it doesn't matter. Because I got mine. Seriously, how many millions do you need? You can get as many films as you can in a short amount of time, and any long-lasting damage that you've done to the entertainment industry, well, that's somebody else's problem, and I don't care about those. Peter Dinklage certainly didn't care about the next generation of dwarfish actors, did he? No. Once he'd become successful, it's time to pull the ladder up. Because as long as I get in through the door, anyone else is just competition. That's what John's post was about. It doesn't matter that an Italian person getting cast as a Latino is actually against what they say they support because they just say they support it. It's not a foundational principle of theirs or anything. What they say is only motivated by one thing, self-interest. And so if what I have to say today counteracts what I said yesterday, that's fine, long as it supports me and I can frame it in a way that puts me in the light of I must get this role. That's why it's not the case that, well, we just miscast Mario once and so we can miscast him as anyone, no. We've got to miscast him specifically as something that I think I'm applicable for because at the end of the day, I'm the only one who can do it. If you don't hire me, you've not just made a bad choice that will harm the quality of your movie. No, you've made a morally abhorrent choice and you're a bad person and everyone should know. Your film should be actively destroyed and boycotted specifically 
because you didn't hire me out of the seven billion people on Earth. He doesn't care about the millions of dollars that go into that movie, or the fact that if a movie loses money, then it actually harms the industry overall, and people are less likely to invest in the next one. No, because he could get a chance for this movie, and he's not going to get a chance in the next one. That's why they like these ideas so much, because it allows the actual peak of society, the most privileged people, the wealthiest people around who literally go and lie on camera for a couple of hours a day and get paid millions to do it. You couldn't get more peak privilege than that. And yet, what do they try and make themselves do? They try to make themselves the victim. This entire article with Jennifer Lawrence was one long rant about how the millionaires are the victims. Don't you know I've gone through Eurocentric training? I can't believe that in a Western country, I was raised under Western ideals. It was disgusting. If society gives benefits to victims, then it was inevitable that the rich would try to turn themselves into it at any cost. As long as it benefited them, they didn't care how destructive those ideas was. I mean, after all, what am I supposed to do with my nose? Using literally anything to try and get a crumb of extra clout. And it's all performative. I don't believe they actually believe all this stuff because their actions are directly contradicting their words. Let's just take all the Twitter storms recently. I mean, we've got Jim Carrey. I'm leaving Twitter. Don't you know I'm leaving and I'm making this huge announcement about how I'm leaving because it's important to know that I'm leaving. It's not the leaving that he finds important. It's the announcement. It's the proclamation. It's the crumb of clout he might get for pretending that I'm a good person and making a sacrifice. What's he sacrificing? Well, on my way out the door, I'm just gonna tell you about this cartoon I made, yeah. You had Whoopi Goldberg, she deactivated her account, uh, made a big announcement about it on television. Don't you know I'm the moral person? If you hire me, then I can protect you from the rabid, horrible horde which I had a hand in creating. Oh, and by the way, yes, I'm done with Twitter, but, but, I, I might come back in the future if I feel comfortable. I'm leaving and I want to make a big uproar about it. But, but, the moment I need to advertise something, don't worry, don't worry, I'll be back. Oh yeah, Jim Carrey, he needed to advertise something and so uh, he stayed on Twitter. Please, please, write articles about how I've quit and include my advertisement in them for free, would you? That'd be nice. And then there's the ever deranged Mark Ruffalo. As it grows more unpredictable and harmful, I'm exploring other avenues to connect. I'm excited to continue and foster our great community. Here's where you can find me, and then he goes to Tumblr. I mean, I hope you're very happy over there, Mark, with you and all the people in dog masks. It's gonna be an experience for you, I'm sure. But don't worry if you were missing Mark, if you thought that any of this meant that he was actually going to do anything about it, or leave, or sacrifice anything. No, no he isn't. I'll also still be here. This is a guy who announced he was leaving, where he was going, and had said he was staying here all along once he'd got the press for it. I'll just be focused on literally every kind of keyword I could cram into a tweet. I'm a good person, you see. So you have to ask, why is Mark doing this? Because he's not like everyone else. They're not trying to claim to be the victim himself. No, no. I'm fighting for them. Because there is a problem with Mark in Hollywood. I can understand why he struggles to navigate those shores because Mark is the living embodiment of their bogeyman which they've created in Hollywood and he can't help it he was born this way and that's why most people would say that it was a horrible idea to persecute him for it but instead Mark's developed a different tactic uh you need me because I can fight for you because most people with his beliefs would say that Mark should get out of the way look if all of these people are so hard done by and we need to lift them up and raise them up and put them on a position a platform above you because of the damage which has been done in the past then mark why don't you get out of the way you're doing a lot of movies look at all these potential roles that other people could have done you're just blocking up a huge chunk of hollywood time that kind of goes against your own morals of course you don't have morals you don't have principles this is about you and so he was really only left with one tactic i need to stay I need my platform because I'm doing good. Sure, Hollywood, yes, you could fire me and put someone else into my place. But don't you know, with my platform, I could fight for them to get other jobs, to replace other people. As long as they don't replace me, then I can continue doing good. I can do more from my position of privilege than I would if I actually obeyed anything that I actually said. This is literally the same argument used by people who are such big fans of redistributive wealth. As long as it's not theirs because I can use that money to fight for the cause and advance everything into the future. And Mark Ruffalo, as long as he maintains his position of getting millions of dollars for every single film he does, can fight for all of these things, all of these keywords that may change tomorrow or next week, and they'll definitely always be an accurate summary of the current thing. Because Mark doesn't have any principles or things he fights for, 
He just knows that the current thing is good, and he'll always be needed, because he'll always be needed to fight for the current thing. They don't care what they say, they don't care what lies they tell, their career is literally lying on camera to people. They will say anything, do anything, as long as it benefits them. And despite the fact that this has actively destroyed Hollywood, because everyone in Hollywood believes this stuff, because everyone in Hollywood is out for themselves, willing to step on anyone else, it means everyone supports the ideology where they can all be victims, where they can all play that game and see who wins. This has caused a power shift away from people rising to the top who are the best at what they could do, into people rising to the top who are best at playing the game. And if talented people aren't making entertainment, then it destroys entertainment. And none of them care because they're the ones getting money, they're the ones leading the show, and the narrative or the river won't change direction, because everyone driving it in that way is all benefiting from it. And so at this point, it's only going to change when someone comes in who doesn't benefit from that. It needs someone from outside to come in and take control. A money man. Someone who doesn't care about your politics, or doesn't care about what kind of PR you think you can spin. If you make this company look bad, if you go out and start bad-mouthing our movie, or saying things before the movie is released which will harm the returns by attacking the fans, offending the people, or saying that our movie is ideological, but it's not meant to be, it's meant to be entertaining, then you're fired. The only attitude in regards to all of this is, what on earth do you think you're doing? What on earth do you think you're saying? Of course you're fired, because you've left me no other option by damaging our reputation and scaring off people from a movie which they might have gone and seen. Back in the past, bad movies still made a lot of money. Why? Because trailers existed, hype existed, and how are you going to know a movie is awful until you've actually seen it, especially before the internet was a thing. And so people got wrapped up in the hype, they went to see the movie and they may have thought it was crap, but they'd already paid their money. Whereas now, what do you get? Well, you get actors doing interviews before movies, trying to advertise movies, and uh, they do nothing but scare them off. Nobody wants to go and see the movie because you've already damaged the brand of it. You've already stripped away any hype by potting in your little message before it came out. And maybe actors were always like this. Maybe they were always stepping on each other. Maybe they always had the new little games that they thought they could play for power. We just didn't know about it. Without the internet or interviews, no one heard their opinions. And now maybe they just need to shut up. And maybe they just need to shut up because they can't control themselves. And actually speaking out against any of this stuff on their piatos is actively damaging the movies and the industry. But the thing is, either of those is acceptable. Because if they shut up, then they can't play their games. They can't try and be the victim and play the power games. And once the power games go away, merit rises to the top. I don't care whether they get fired or whether somebody gags them and just tells them that you shouldn't be saying any of this stuff because you're scaring away our customers. Either works for me because I think you end up in the same place. But one thing's for sure, I've always been against separating the art from the artist and quite frankly, if you come across as a prat, then that's inevitably going to affect my opinion of anything you do. And Hollywood should bear that in mind. Your movie doesn't live in a bubble, your customers have thoughts and opinions outside and maybe, just maybe, you should hire actors that respect that. But those are just my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know down in the comments below. Like the video if you liked the video. Subscribe. More videos like this in the future. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.